your doctor says that the cancer is gone. Do you think that the website helped in your recovery? It has to be part of the, the, the healing process. To have people say, we love you, we're thinking of you. Robert Urich, known for his rugged good looks and effortless charm, captivated audiences across America with his magnetic presence on screen in the 70s and 80s. But behind the scenes, a silent battle raged. A battle against a formidable adversary that would test his strength and resilience in ways he never imagined. What frightening events unfolded in Yurik's personal and family life? Join us on this gripping adventure as we unravel the tragic death of Robert Yurik and his wife. The Epic Journey of Robert Yurik Robert Yurik entered the world in the quaint town of Toronto, Ohio, way back in December 1946. His parents, John P. Yurik and Cecilia Yurik, were his unwavering supporters from day one. John, a steelworker, faced the challenge of hearing loss due to his noisy workplace. But Cecilia, his devoted wife, stood by his side, caring for him and Robert with endless love and dedication. Robert experienced a typical childhood, filled with joy and affection. In terms of his education, Robert attended a school run by Byzantine Roman Catholic sisters, where he absorbed not only knowledge, but also values that would shape his future. Little did he know, destiny had grand plans in store for him. As he grew older, Robert found himself awarded a football scholarship at Florida State University, a remarkable achievement for a small-town kid. After completing his bachelor's degree, he decided to delve deeper into his studies by pursuing a master's degree in broadcast research and management at Michigan State University. This academic journey further solidified his understanding of media and television. It's fascinating to think that this iconic figure of Hollywood initially started his career in sports and education. These diverse experiences would later prove invaluable in shaping his path in the entertainment world. The discipline he gained from football and the communication skills honed during his academic pursuits would lay the foundation for his remarkable ascent to the top of the entertainment industry. Before his marriage to Heather Menzies, Robert Urich had experienced another chapter in his love life. At the young age of 21, he tied the knot with Barbara Rucker in 1968. At that time, he navigated the challenging world of radio advertising as a salesman. Unfortunately, their marriage didn't last, and they parted ways in 1974. After his divorce, fate intervened, bringing Urich and Heather Menzies together. Heather, a model and actress with a Canadian-American background, had her own share of life's twists and turns. Previously married to John Kitt, she had journeyed through unexpected paths. It was in 1975 that Robert Urich and Heather Menzies crossed paths, their connection similar to two stars meeting in the vast night sky. The chemistry between Robert Urich and Heather Menzies was undeniable, evident even in the corridors of their acting class. Urich's father, too, sensed their connection, foreseeing Menzies as his son's future spouse. His intuition proved accurate as their love story unfolded in a captivating manner. Unlike his first marriage, which perhaps stemmed from youthful exuberance, Yurik approached his second union with a newfound maturity. This maturity served as the foundation of their enduring bond, surpassing the duration of his previous marriage. Heather Menzies, from Toronto to Hollywood. Heather Margaret Menzies, a woman of many talents and diverse experiences, was born on December 3, 1949 in Toronto, Canada. Her Scottish parents had moved to Canada after World War II. Heather's father, who had dreams of becoming an artist, passed on his love for the arts to her from a young age. Heather's upbringing was anything but ordinary. Her family's adventurous nature led them to live in various places across the globe. By the time Heather turned 14, she had lived in Vancouver, Miami, London, and Southern California. This nomadic childhood exposed her to different cultures and lifestyles, shaping her into someone with a deep understanding of the world and the ability to adapt to new environments. Heather Menzies finished high school at John Burroughs High School in Burbank, California, earning her diploma in 1967. Her love for the arts went beyond just school, as she continued her studies at Falcon Studios University of the Arts. This education became crucial as she entered the entertainment world. Heather Menzies' journey in the world of cinema 
has left an indelible mark on the hearts of audiences, particularly through her role in The Sound of Music. Her path led her from the enchanting hills of Austria to unexpected shores, overcoming both cinematic challenges and life's trials along the way. Menzies portrayed Louisa, one of the endearing Von Trapp children, known for her playful spirit in the beloved 1965 musical. Gretel, what happened to your finger? It got caught. Caught in what? Friedrich's teeth. <laughs> Lisa, you all right? Just fair. At just 16 years old, with her blonde hair and blue eyes, she stepped into the shoes of this 13-year-old character. The film featured a memorable ensemble cast, with Julie Andrews shining as Maria, the singing nun governess. Against the backdrop of the stunning Tyrolean scenery, timeless melodies like Do Re Mi, The Lonely Goat Herd, So Long Farewell, My Favorite Things, Edelweiss, and the title song echoed through the air. The sound of music transcended time, becoming an enduring classic. Menzies and her fellow actors delivered performances that will resonate for generations to come. As an adult, Menzies delved into the realm of cultish, tongue-in-cheek, low-budget horror films, a stark departure from her days in The Sound of Music. Her early television career saw her in child roles on shows like My Three Sons, and as a guest on series such as The Farmer's Daughter, Bonanza, The High Chaparral, and The Love Boat. Initially, she often portrayed the innocent, naive girl, but her roles evolved. In S, Menzies portrayed a character faced with the shocking revelation that her partner had been transformed into a snake by her father, a deranged doctor. Her compelling performance, marked by gripping emotions and intense cries, added depth to the film's eerie and unconventional storyline. In Piranha, Menzies took on the role of a slightly quirky private investigator in a comedic twist on the Jaws theme, where swimmers fell prey to flesh-eating fish. This role showcased her versatility and ability to adapt to diverse characters and genres, a departure from the innocence of the Von Trapp family. Despite the contrast, her willingness to explore different genres underscored her talent. Her venture into television continued with the 1978 sci-fi series Logan's Run, where she portrayed a revolutionary character throughout all 14 episodes. This role further enriched her impressive portfolio and highlighted her acting prowess. Love, loss, and legacy. Tragic events and the joy of children shaped Heather Menzies' journey when she embarked on a lifelong adventure with her actor husband, Robert Urich, choosing to take on his surname. This marriage heralded a fresh chapter in both her personal and professional life. However, their love story wasn't without its challenges. Like many couples, they dreamt of starting a family, but fate had other plans. Heather faced several heartbreaking miscarriages, testing their strength and resilience. Yet their love refused to be overshadowed by adversity. Despite these trials, the couple made a heartwarming decision to adopt. Their choice to welcome needy children into their hearts and homes showcased their boundless love and generosity, shedding light on their unwavering commitment to building a loving family. As time went by, Menzies found her most fulfilling role yet, being a mother. Alongside her husband, Robert Urich, they welcomed three adopted children into their lives, shaping a vital part of her journey. As she embraced motherhood, her focus shifted from career pursuits to nurturing her children, highlighting the significance of family life and love in her multifaceted story. Their first adopted child, Ryan Urich, joined their family in 1978, marking a joyous beginning to their parental journey. Two years later, in 1980, Emily Urich became the newest addition to their loving family. The warmth and affection within their home created a sanctuary filled with laughter and unwavering support. You must never come to dinner on time. Uh, never eat your soup quietly. <laughs> The Urich Menzies household expanded further in 1988 with the addition of Alice Urich. Their family's bond crossed boundaries, fostering a journey marked by shared dreams, laughter, and boundless affection. Ryan Urich, the youngest among the siblings, followed the creative path of his parents, briefly venturing into an acting career. Through roles in films like The Killer Inside and Night Walk, he showcased his talent in the entertainment industry. Despite the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, 
Yurik found true contentment in the simplicity of home life with his beloved wife and cherished children. Even amidst the sparkle of fame and fortune, his heart found its greatest peace within the walls of his cozy home. From TV debut to silver screen stardom. In the early 1970s, Robert Yurik embarked on a journey into the world of television, laying the foundation for what would later make him a household name. He began his television career with guest appearances and roles in short-lived series, where he worked tirelessly to refine his skills and display his versatility. His debut on television screens occurred in 1972 when he landed a guest spot on the popular series The FBI. This was a significant milestone for the aspiring actor, offering him the chance to showcase his talent to a wider audience. However, the turning point in Yurik's career came in 1973 when he secured a leading role in the TV series adaptation of Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice, based on the 1969 film. Although the series faced challenges and was canceled after just six episodes, Yurik's performance was widely praised, marking a crucial step forward in his career. Undeterred by this setback, Yurik's determination paid off later that same year when he made his film debut alongside the legendary Clint Eastwood in Magnum Force. In this thrilling action movie, Yurik portrayed a vigilante MP patrol police officer, solidifying his presence in the world of cinema. The year 1975 proved to be another milestone for Yurik's career when he landed a big role in the action crime drama series SWAT. This opportunity didn't come easy. It was thanks to the support of Burt Reynolds that Yurik got a chance to audition for the role. Yurik's audition left a lasting impression on executive producer Aaron Spelling, who cast him as Officer Jim Street in the series. SWAT quickly gained popularity, becoming a mid-season replacement and attracting high ratings, showcasing Yurik's ability to resonate with audiences. Despite its success, the show faced controversy due to its violent content and was ultimately canceled in 1976. However, Yurik had already established himself as a skilled actor in the industry with his portrayal of Officer Jim Street. In 1977, he ventured into the realm of sitcoms by playing Peter, the tennis player, in the popular show Soap. His presence on the show brought a delightful blend of humor and charm. Yet it was his role in the bewitched spin-off series Tabitha that truly showcased his acting abilities. Cast as Paul Thurston, a charismatic and self-centered talk show host, Yurik's performance was truly captivating. At first, Tabitha drew in a large audience and had high ratings. However, changes in scheduling later caused fewer people to tune in, and sadly the show was canceled in 1978 after airing just 13 episodes. Soon after this disappointment, Yurik got another chance to work with the famous producer Aaron Spelling. This time, he snagged the main role in the popular series, Vega. Yurik played Dan Tana, a smooth and clever private detective solving crimes in the glamorous yet tough world of Las Vegas. The show Vega quickly captured the hearts of fans and became a hit for ABC, earning high ratings. Yurik's outstanding performance in the series earned him nominations for two Golden Globe Awards, proving his talent as an actor. However, as the show progressed into its third season, its viewership began to decline. Despite Yurik's captivating portrayal and the show's popularity, it faced difficulties due to limited support from the network. Eventually, Vega was canceled at the end of its third season in June 1981. After Vega ended, Yurik made a transition to the world of movies by signing with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, MGM. His first film with MGM was Endangered Species in 1982, a sci-fi movie directed by Alan Rudolph. This change marked a new chapter in Yurik's career as he explored the opportunities and challenges presented by the film industry. Following his role in Endangered Species, Yurik returned to television with the series Gavilan. In the series, Yurik played the main character Gavilon, a former CIA agent who had switched careers to become an oceanographer. Despite Yurik's dedication to the role, Gavilon met an unfortunate end and was cancelled after airing only seven episodes. In 1984, Yurik delved back into the world of movies with two notable roles. First, he graced the screen in The Ice Pirates, a science fiction comedy that offered a quirky twist on space adventures. Later that year, he starred in Wes Craven's Invitation to Hell, 
a horror flick from the renowned director. Yurik's film journey continued with Turk 182 in 1985. Although the movie didn't make big waves in theaters, his commitment to his craft never wavered. That same year, 1985, marked Yurik's triumphant return to TV in the detective series Spencer for Hire. The show became a sensation, running successfully for three seasons and cementing Yurik's status as a small screen star. Even after the series wrapped up, he continued to portray Spencer in various TV movies like Spencer Ceremony 1993, Spencer, Pale Kings and Princes 1994, Spencer, The Judas Goat 1994, and Spencer, A Savage Place 1995. In 1988, Yurik took on the role of host for the documentary series National Geographic Explorer, where he demonstrated his skill in presenting a wide range of topics. His exceptional performance in the series earned him an ACE Award, highlighting his talents beyond acting. A significant moment in Yurik's career came in 1989 when he played Jake Spoon in the highly praised television miniseries Lonesome Dove. His portrayal in this epic Western story received widespread acclaim, adding to his reputation as a skilled and adaptable actor. During the 1990s, Yurik shifted his focus to television films and embarked on various projects. Between 1990 and 1991, he appeared in the sitcom American Dreamer and took on a leading role in the TV movie 83 Hours Till Dawn. The following year, he starred in the drama series Crossroads, which aired on ABC for 10 episodes. Although it didn't become a long-term success, it helped to establish Yurik's presence on television. One notable project in the early 90s was the sitcom It Had to Be You in 1993, where he acted alongside Faye Dunaway. Unfortunately, the show received negative reviews and was canceled after just four episodes. Despite these setbacks, Yurik continued to explore different opportunities. In 1995, he provided his voice for the Disney television documentary Alien Encounters from New Tomorrowland, a unique project. Health Battles and Legal Wrangles In 1996, Yurik landed the starring role in the TNT Western series The Lazarus Man, which garnered strong ratings and was renewed for a second season. However, it was during the filming of this series that Yurik's health issues came to light. While working on The Lazarus Man, Yurik learned that he had a rare type of cancer. It all began innocently during one of their cherished power walks, where Yurik and Menzies strolled hand in hand, discussing dreams and aspirations. Yurik casually mentioned discovering a small lump, no bigger than a pea during a shower. At the time, Menzies wondered how something so tiny could pose a threat. Little did they know, his health was at risk. A routine doctor's visit turned their world upside down. Yurik received a diagnosis of synovial tissue sarcoma, a rare cancer affecting soft tissue, often found in the arms, legs, feet, and joints. The actor battled the disease for years, with Menzies steadfastly supporting him every step of the way, a constant source of strength. Despite his struggle, Yurik refused to let the health challenges define him. Instead, he continued to work tirelessly, even advocating for a cure for this relentless illness. Despite this diagnosis, he remained committed to his work and informed the production company of The Lazarus Man about his condition. Although he was allowed to continue working according to their agreement, the show was unexpectedly canceled before its second season. Yurik felt disappointed by the decision and believed that there were legal ramifications for the way the situation was handled. He expressed frustration, stating, There's a law against what they did. They found out I had cancer, and they just canceled the show. They didn't ask the doctors if I could work. They didn't ask if I could go back to work. In the year 2000, he took legal action against the production company, Castle Rock Television, seeking compensation of around $1.5 million. However, the legal case concluded with an agreement reached between the parties involved, the details of which were kept confidential. Despite the legal dispute, Yurik remained remarkably friendly, opting to settle the matter privately with both sides agreeing not to reveal the details publicly. Even while fighting cancer, Yurik showed incredible strength. In 1997, he hosted two documentary series, Vital Signs and Boatworks, on PBS. Then, in 1998, 
A glimmer of hope pierced through the darkness as Yurik received the news of being declared cancer-free. His triumphant return to television, starring as Captain Jim Kennedy III in Love Boat The Next Wave, served as a joyful victory. The subsequent year, he graced the Broadway stage, captivating audiences with his resilience in the role of Billy Flynn in the musical Chicago. Yurik's dedication to the cause was solidified as he took on the role of national spokesperson for the American Cancer Society. However, his final television role came with the sitcom Emerald in 2001, where he earned acclaim for his exceptional performance despite facing adversity. Robert Urich's Tireless Crusade Against Cancer Robert Urich's story goes beyond his Hollywood achievements. It's also about his strong commitment to helping cancer patients. Despite his health struggles with synovial cell sarcoma, Urich remained dedicated to his work on various projects. His resilience in pursuing his goals despite challenges served as an inspiration. Yet Urich's impact extended far beyond the screen. Together with his beloved wife, he initiated a remarkable endeavor, the Robert Urich Foundation for the University of Michigan Comprehensive Cancer Center. This foundation emerged from their shared determination to make a significant difference in the battle against cancer. It became a platform for them to finance groundbreaking cancer research and offer hope to those facing similar challenges as Urich. The Robert Urich Foundation for the University of Michigan Comprehensive Cancer Center became a guiding force in the fight against cancer, providing essential funding for research aimed at uncovering new treatments and ultimately finding a cure. It stood as a symbol of their commitment to improving the world, bringing them closer to wiping out this deadly illness. But their work didn't stop there. The American Cancer Society entrusted Robert Urich and his wife with the role of national spokespersons, a position carrying immense responsibility in advocating for millions of cancer patients. Urich's battle with cancer had transformed him into a beacon of hope, resonating with many who had faced similar challenges. As national spokespersons for the American Cancer Society, the Urichs embarked on a mission to raise awareness, encourage early detection, and push for research advancements in cancer treatment. They used their platform to educate the public about the importance of screenings, self-exams, and early intervention. Through their advocacy, they offered vital support to those who might otherwise have been unaware of the steps they could take to safeguard their health. Robert Urich's impact extends far beyond his roles in movies and TV shows. His life was proof of the power of determination, especially in fighting against cancer. Alongside his wife, he left an indelible mark on cancer awareness and advocacy. Their story proves that even amidst hardships, individuals can shine as symbols of hope and catalysts for change in the fight against diseases like cancer. Their dedication to research, spreading knowledge and early detection remains a source of inspiration and encouragement for all affected by this devastating illness. A moment of triumph had come in 1998 when he proudly announced that he was cancer-free, marking a significant victory in his battle against synovial cell sarcoma. It seemed like he had overcome the odds and was on the path to recovery. However, life had other plans. In 2000, the discovery of tumors again in his body signaled the beginning of a new chapter in his health journey. Doubt and uncertainty loomed once again, casting a shadow over his life. Despite facing numerous challenges, a glimmer of hope emerged when Urich received a promising treatment that offered to eliminate the threatening tumors. This was a symbol of both the progress of medical science and Urich's unwavering determination. Sadly, in April 2002, the world received the sad news of Robert Urich's death. He passed away at the age of 55, leaving behind a legacy of remarkable performances, courageous resilience, and a life that deeply touched the hearts of many. Robert Urich passed away at Los Robles Hospital and Medical Center in Thousand Oaks after being admitted just a week earlier. His hospitalization stemmed from respiratory issues, which proved to be one of his toughest battles. Throughout his time in the hospital, Urich faced complications that worsened his health issues. Internal bleeding became a significant concern, challenging his strength, while a collapsed lung added further strain to his road to recovery. The news of Robert Urich's death brought immense sorrow to his fans, family, and the entertainment industry. 
It served as a touching reminder of life's fragility, highlighting how even the bravest and most resilient individuals can be tested. The world mourned the loss of a talented actor, a dedicated father, and a beloved husband. From sorrow to strength. After her husband's death, Menzies transformed her sorrow into a meaningful project, the Robert Urich Foundation, established to propel sarcoma research forward. This foundation became Menace's mission, filling the emptiness left by her late spouse. However, the battle against cancer took on a new significance for Menzies when she was diagnosed with brain cancer in 2017. With just four weeks remaining, Heather Menzies took her final breath on Christmas Eve of that pivotal year, surrounded by the family she and Robert Urich had nurtured together. Their three children remained by her side until the very end, mirroring Menzies's unwavering support for her husband over 15 years earlier. The irony of her passing, succumbing to the very illness she had devoted her life to fighting, adds another layer of sadness to an already tragic tale. Yet, amidst this sorrowful narrative, a profound brightness emerges, a brightness ignited by the love they bestowed, embodied in their children, and their shared commitment to combating the devastating disease that ultimately claimed them both. In the big picture of life, Menzies probably approached her last moments with a feeling of calm, looking forward to reuniting with her husband after many years apart. Despite the sad circumstances, some may view this long-lasting struggle as a story with both sadness and sweetness. The fight against cancer continues for many people, whether they're well-known or not. Yet the love and commitment that Yurik and Menzies showed in their cause, both individually and together, give hope to future generations dealing with this tough enemy. The Robert Yurik Foundation's impact continues through the capable hands of the star couple's children, including their son, Ryan Yurik, who later pursued a career in medicine. Although Ryan had appeared alongside his father in Survive the Savage Sea, it was witnessing his father's battle with cancer that inspired him to become a doctor. Studying biology when his father underwent his final round of cancer treatment, Ryan candidly shared, I chose medicine because I couldn't help my dad medically, but maybe I can help someone else. Ryan remembers the difficult trips to the hospital for chemotherapy, with each bump in the road a painful reminder of his father's sensitivity to the treatment. Watching a loved one endure such hardships was incredibly tough to handle. Ryan disclosed that his father received the shocking diagnosis of cancer three times. The initial discovery of the disease brought immense challenges for the whole family. Yurik underwent treatments involving surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. Despite the toll these treatments took on his appearance, particularly his hair, he displayed remarkable resilience, continuing to work amidst adversity. Throughout this trying period, Robert Urich's unwavering spirit shone brightly. He refused to let cancer define him or dampen his passion for his profession. In a testament to his strength, he embarked on a journey for a National Geographic program titled On Assignment, where he ventured to some of the most remote and challenging places on Earth. This endeavor stood as proof of his courage and left an indelible impact on those who witnessed his bravery. Seeing his father as remarkably strong, Playing with his grandchildren just days before his passing, Ryan cherishes those memories while dedicating himself to helping others facing similar challenges. Losing his father and then witnessing his mother fight the same disease must have been a difficult journey for Ryan, especially as a doctor himself. Similar to his parents' dedication, he remains unwavering in his commitment to assisting others through the difficult path of illness. Ryan's sister Emily found her purpose while seeking to make a meaningful impact. She became an ER nurse, dedicating herself to a career where she could offer care, support, and solace to those facing their most vulnerable moments. The Yurik siblings' dedication to healing and aiding others showcased their deep understanding of the importance of compassion and assistance in the face of illness. Together, Ryan and Emily pooled their unwavering determination to support the Yurik Foundation. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.